which used to be called uh, legislation, but also it can be coined as uh, representation or ratification. Um, so after the consultation meeting, we have all reports of opinion collection, like the report generated by the police, or and a secondary study or presentation on the discussion throughout the week our process which may be made by the facilitator or company authority or research team or any other contributors. And we also have the full transcript of the full consultation meeting. So based on these materials, then we need to try to reach uh, to find out what the broad consensus is. And the, this is uh, what the component authority should be responsible for. So they need to sort of like a, uh, have to respond to uh, these um, stages and the process that we have done so many, uh, so many work on them. Uh, so in some cases, uh, the issue might be resolved with a guideline such as that uh, our one of the cases, uh, platform economy, um, the National Development Council uh, published a guideline in response to uh, platform economy, or and also there might be, the issue might be resolved with a policy or a statement by the public authority. In the other cases, uh, it could be uh, by in formulated into a draft bill, and then it can be sent to the legislative gen, which is the element of the uh, Taiwan government. So like the Hoover case, or uh, like equally the case, we have sent the draft bill uh, to the legislature again. So since 2015, 26 cases um, has been discussed through the town process and uh, roughly 80% have led to the decisive government action. Yeah, so this is what happened um, as they So any questions? Any questions? Can you um, comment on those 20% that do not lead to decisive action and how they would be different from the other question? Yes. Um, there's um, exactly one case where there is strong consensus, rough consensus, and there's a draft bill that is rejected by the parliament, and that's the online liquor sales case. So people, when people criticize retail, and that's the only case they use, because that's the only case where there's a strong consensus, and then there's a new batch of parliamentarians, and a new batch of parliamentarians rejects the consensus of the previous process, which involves the MPs office and so on, because it's seen as uh, very political. It's also part of uh, an issue. Uh, and so from that point onward, uh, all the retail consultation invites as much as possible uh, MPs office from all different parties in the same committee to the preparation uh, meetings and the consultation meeting if possible. And sometimes the MP herself comes, uh, like the social enterprise one, uh, because MP Karen Yu is a social entrepreneur herself. So she actually participates as a stakeholder, uh, not as an MP. That's the best uh, scenario. But otherwise, we at least keep them informed so that they will not flip around just because only the other party attended the consultation meeting. So that's the one case that gets flipped around. The other uh, 90, uh, well, 18 percent, sorry, uh, the 90 percent, the 20 percent, which is 18 percent uh, of the cases, um, less to decisive civil society action. And the civil society asked the government to not take action. Uh, Cyberbullying is the, the, one of the very good cases. People called for a law on cyberbullying. But after the V-time process, people decided uh, it would give the government too much power if the administration gets essentially judicial power uh, to, to do online censorship uh, based on the cost of cyberbullying, but actually you know, do more harm than good. So people want to speed up the judicial process, want to speed up the social platform uh, inform inform process, uh, like uh, there's prevention lines, there's direct <coughs> intervention lines, and so on. But these are operated by nonprofits uh, called IWIN uh, in Taiwan. And the general consensus is that we should empower 
these civil society, academic, educational institutions, the government should fund them, but the government should not pass new laws because that will actually reduce their incentive to work and uh, actually spend taxpayer money on something that could enhance the government's authoritarian rule. Uh, and so that, again, is a strong consensus. But the consensus is for the government to do nothing, uh, and except, of course, funding more efforts in the intermediary and social entrepreneurs. So there's many cases like that in which, uh, after the discussion, uh, we feel that it's too early for the government to do something, or the government should just open a sandbox uh, for people to experiment on, and so on. So it's not always a, a bad idea if uh, the government do nothing. Like if you look at the PO network, the, um, again, we only lead to decisive action for about 55, 50 cases that run through the PO collaboration meetings. Like the time zone of Taiwan did not get changed. Uh, and that is a good thing. <laughs> so, so it is not the percentage of decisive action, it's the percentage of people feeling that they have reached the consensus the government has responded uh, substantially and point by point. And so once people receive this point by point response and feel that they have the situation improved, it doesn't necessarily lead to legislation or regulation. So that's the answer. And, and one, one quick follow-up. In, yes. in selecting issues that go through the B Taiwan process, yes. um, is there an attempt to avoid highly partisan issues mm -hmm. at all, or? Yeah. Yeah, at, at the moment, v Taiwan exists uh, in this special political area where there is no ministry owning digital, right? Uh, as additional minister, I can call any ministry, but I don't have my own ministry. So if there is any issue that clearly belongs to only one ministry that is not digital or emergent in nature, then of course that ministry has no incentive uh, to respond to the v Taiwan um, process um, because they already have the PO process and the whole open government process going on. So Vitaan at the moment is specifically for issues that are emergent and that are digital and that has no clear belonging uh, in, in the ministries and that are potentially better solved in the civil society. That's, there's always this potential uh, for the v Taiwan to kick off, which uh, is good and bad, right? The good part is that the zero solution is always acceptable because nobody has any idea anyway. Uh, <laughs> the bad thing is that it severely limits uh, the cases that we can discuss. Uh, and so that gives it less planning power. Uh, we're trying to fix that with the new Digital Communication Act, uh, but that is currently being debated in the parliament. Maybe one month from now, we will have the law that actually authorizes the Taiwan to talk about any related to internet multi-stakeholder governance, which has a clear definition in the internet society. And that would give v Taiwan more legislative power by having a law that essentially empowers v Taiwan. But not just v Taiwan, but any process that conform to uh, internet governance standards. So maybe the internet governance forum in Taiwan or many other, other forums, as long as it adheres to radical transparency, inclusiveness, and so on, is given uh, support by that law. But that law itself is the product of Vita Taiwan. So it's almost like uh, bootstrapping itself. So um, maybe next year there will be more cases to Vita Taiwan. Um, is there anything about the particular issue that you makes this kind of work easier or more difficult compared to other democratic systems, say that only having one house compared to two, yeah. for example? Yeah, that, that's one. And, and the other one is that the administration actually proposes most of the bills, uh, not the parties. And so it creates a neutral zone of drafting, right? Um, in the current cabinet, there's more independent, non-partisan ministers than ministers of any party. And so, so we don't see that in many other jurisdictions. And, and so basically, uh, me being an independent is actually not something that's uh, unique or strange. Uh, most of the cabinet member ministers are independent. Uh, I wouldn't say most, but uh, like 40% or something. Uh, the other 60% belong to two different things. So in any case, uh, we're seen as the drafting neutral zone. And then once we send our draft to the parliament, then the partisan fight begins. And so v Taiwan clearly belongs to the administrative branch. And so in here, it's less partisan. Uh, and people don't usually put party politics in it because if it requires a law change. There's plenty of time for the <laughs> parties uh, to, to get involved. So I think that, in particular, is very helpful 
to frame the administration who cares about stakeholders more than the constituents um, in a neutral zone, and that may will be found to happen. There's academics who took the VTOWN result and did their own uh, research focus group and, and whatever other research. So VTOWN is not the only consultation, although it's the only live stream one. Yeah. But sorry, I guess I mean um, by the government agencies. Yeah. So yes. with, with the transportation services and like that, we hosting another kind of consultation. Yes. VTOW basically uh, is just one step toward consensus, right? VTOW produces rough consensus, meaning that uh, it's not so such a fine consensus that everybody can sign their names on. We're not a legislative body, right? Uh, and so it's basically uh, what uh, what the internet governance code synthesis documents. Like people can live with these things, but that's the extent of the binding power. So if people want to refine this, of course they need more meetings and more, actually we, in, in addition to pre-meetings every Wednesday, sometimes we have post-meetings uh, where the responsive authorities and agencies came back to the weekly hackathon and said that we want to ratify your consensus, but we need some clarification of what this exactly means and things like that. And as long as it's kept radically transparent, we also allow these competent authorities to return back to the community to essentially refine the consensus into like smaller working groups and so on. So it's very dyna dynamic. It is not uh, required by any law or regulation at the point uh, that VHAN must be the first stop or the last stop or something like that. But that may change uh, next year, uh, having a law that talks specifically about what is the consultation. So at the moment it's very freeform, but it may be less freeform in the future. Yeah, the, the VTOW consultation always in, in, in import <laughs> all the competent authorities related to the balance. So Uber, of course, is co-determined by ministers of finance, economy, transportation, you name it. And they will all be on the government side of the table. And they may themselves run subsequent consultations as well based on the general consensus. But because this is a live stream, so many people have viewed it, it's almost impossible to ignore what's produced by VTI1 uh, in the sub uh, subsequent consultations. So most we will see refinements uh, of the points instead of completely, you know, uh, starting from scratch consultations. Um, could you give some examples of uh, some competent authorities? Or I guess the first part is, are there competent authorities that aren't government bodies? Mm -hmm. um, yes, and as I said, like, I win or so on, they are competent authorities, but they are mostly, uh, you know, uh, non-profits and so on that are given by law to operate on, for example, child safety on the internet. And so they're competent authority by law, but they're not public service. Okay. I'm sure it's things like that exist in all jurisdictions. So you are general thing. So we move on to the next. Part, which is the Alex. Yeah. Please, please. Uh, yeah, I haven't used this before either. So. And we'll be switching Slido to feedback form mode. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's, uh, okay, let's see. So, uh, feedback frame is actually uh, by kind of one of our more Toronto's own. Uh, if anybody's encountered Jason Deisman, like this is his project, he's been shipping. Uh, um, he's been chipping away at this for like a long, long time. Um, he's come from multiple iterations of it, obviously. It looks super simple, but there's like a lot in there, which uh, I'm sure like from like a behavioral psychology perspective is also like, um, one of the things that's actually like a more, more recent incorporation, but it started showing that, you know, it dramatically changed results was just like a little flap that you put on to obscure a lot of people think. Uh, so like literally, like, 
literally he said it took me 10 years to figure that out, and when I did, like, people just switched. Um, so there's a lot of like pretty like, interesting, interesting stuff out there. Also, just to remove any bias, it's like, um, the idea is, like, I don't think anybody's gonna sort of like, uh, feel differently about ideas necessarily in this room, just because of like where they're placed. But uh, I'm just gonna go through the additional step of like, you know, collecting, shuffling, and then like redistributing the ideas. And then basically, what we'll do after that is, um, you get some of these little tokens, you put it in the little, uh, thing in the um, and, yeah, so, I'm gonna, I think we should put a video of this on the intro video.
this to become a reality, we need your help. I'm working with Spark Innovations, a Canadian award-winning industrial design company. We are almost ready to start manufacturing. Pre-order your feedback right today and help kickstart a little more. Okay, I do not intend this to be specifically a promo. <laughs> yeah, yes, I will stop the video there. <laughs> Um, but he did, uh, like, I, I talked to him, he really wanted to be here, he is actually on vacation right now in Mexico. Um, so he uh, basically said, use these frames for the session if you think it would be useful. Uh, there wasn't yet an opportunity for us to reflect a little bit more about next steps, um, and we figured that might be something that we want to do before we wrap up the session. So uh, kind of doing this, going to take these, shuffle them up, um, put them out. Again, these ideas like and how they like fare is not a reflection, obviously, on like you. It's also, I think, a really good opportunity to like flesh these ideas out a lot more, like the strengths and opportunities parts, um, concerns and challenges, so write all of them. Um, I would recommend a slightly finer pen than a Sharpie just for those sections, because they can fill up space pretty quickly. Um, and otherwise, yeah.
在我没有塞的。这个就是为了让没有电。没有网络，没有带着。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>
also what we're adding, a beautiful thing about these frames is uh, they can be used in literally any language. Um, so that's, uh, that, that was something that I uh, heard that gives me a lot of success in using the project. So we're going to take photos, right? Yes, Which yeah, to visualize. Yes. And enter it through the spreadsheet. As it sits on the table. Hey, and then we have solid outcome. That took like basically about minutes. That's right. That's right. Thank you. 
慢慢变老的这个变体。真的假的？真的。这样好看，那个是破费。嗯，等下回去我再说。嗯，我应该昨天跟你说。嗯，昨天我是先睡着，我昨天也是，我昨天也是。我醒来就去
。可是爱君没办法下载啊。对啊。爱君最大的问题。就翻各种方式 ，screen screen shot 是外挂的，外挂的，外挂的，因为你可以看到你基本上就已经下载过了，已经暂存了一个，就是，只是它没有维修的。可是 IG 没有网，没有电脑 ，IG 有电脑版吗？一定有啊，网站。有吗？你有用网络看过 IG 吗？我是没有。那没有哎、欸，应该可以啊。IG 哎、欸，应该不太可能。是吗？你要检查来，一定要去检查。从来没想过这个问题。应该一定。不然他就少了很多，很少功能量的。不行，他都会要我开 APP 啊。你有用网 PC 版或者网电脑版网页？我觉得没有哎、欸，他都会叫你进 A P P 啊。没有。没有。哈哈，他只有脸，他只有手机啊。就是如果你要用电脑开硬开也是手手机的界面，只要好像是这样讲。对，它的就变成宽版面的马赛克转移。对啊。那我们要，我觉得我们应该要用的是一个 PC 跟 Mobile 都有的 ，APP 跟 PC 都有的，比较适合我们的。Linux 是一个。对啊，反正因为一千张图，印象很薄。我们现在的故事，哎，我现在在讲的是这个故事。哈哈哈哈哈。Uh, so we are all wrapped up. Um, we're going to uncover the feedback frames and so could we have your help just uh, sure. taking some pictures uh, to record these. And yeah, after, we re uh, after we do the reveals, we can just go around, see some of the consensus and also uh, some of the comments. We tried to get funding, I should say, to develop this app, the big grant that we um, applied for. We didn't get so we're looking for alternative funding streams right now. Um, and we will be working in the city of Peterborough um, because it's just so much easier to work with the smaller municipality. I 
surprised by the diversity of opinion. For day two, there is a food festival in here. Um, so if you guys could take like a second as we continue to wrap up Minnesota uh, Town, we'll be speaking pretty soon. Just as an overview, review of the things that we've talked about. And with that, we'll close out the session. And uh, obviously, people can feel free to take whatever the materials that you can use from day one.
All right, so um, for the last 10 minutes or so, we're just uh, quickly wrapping up. Uh, and uh, feel free to feed uh, the feedback forms uh, at any time during or after uh, disclosure. But this is very important because the feedback form uh, informed this entire workshop design. It was uh, due to the feedback form at New York City that we have a much easier process than here. And your feedback will be taken into account for our next uh, workshop. Uh, I saw that on the collaborative note that there is a uh, question about whether issue-based mapping, the thing that we learned the first day, has been used for detail and conversations, which is the second day. And actually, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, that happened for the first time for the data integration. Uh, the facilitator, Billy, uh, used issue-based mapping uh, in the VTAL and public consultation process. Uh, actually, a lot of people uh, in the open data community, civic data community, saw issue-based mapping for the first time. First time, even though it's just a bridge version of using real-time board, still it is uh, where the methodology start to meet. So running this workshop also means a lot for us for the uh, PO and people in the v one and the F-Zero communities to also uh, learn about each other's methodologies and we'll do more of this kind of cross-pollination and I uh, see that uh, the dynamic, like the first day when we ask people to maximize the amount of strangers in each table, <laughs> we see some of that dynamic happening here as well and so that is kind of our most important value running this kind of co-creative workshops and your feedback will massively improve the experience for our next CD as well. And so with that, uh, I would like first to thank our organizer, <laughs> without whom we would not be in Toronto, we would be in Ottawa, <laughs> and uh, we made this whole trip because uh, Alex arranged like literally everything, so please a round of applause. <laughs> So um, would Alex like to share some thoughts about running this whole process and your questions? Because you've been asking us all the questions. <laughs> um, I think uh, thank you for being patient with all the technological issues. <laughs> Pretty ironic that it's like a digital participation workshop. <laughs> like the last thing we had is Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was uh, yeah, this is a little awesome. Group. Thank you for uh, you know, like it completely came out of the blue. As I said, like I'm not particularly. That it, um, it was like amazing to see just how even like you know when approached with like hey here's this thing uh, kind of I mean, love the civic tech uh, I think these people are cool they're passing through Toronto um, and just seeing how people reacted positively to that and were willing to reach out to their own networks um, I think I really appreciated seeing that just seeing how willing people were I guess like to you know, like, try out something new um, even if it didn't come from like specific familiar authority especially. Um, so yeah, from my perspective, thank you. I have learned so much <laughs> in the last couple of days. Um, yeah, that's I think that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right. Awesome. And so we'll be back. We'll be back uh, next May uh, for the Open Government Partnership in Ottawa. And we made a promise to our uh, techo people here that uh, whenever we go to Ottawa, we'll just spend a few days in Toronto. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, so there could be a reunion, and you're all welcome to meet, meet up again, and maybe we can share some new developments, both in the town of Toronto and also here in Toronto. So any like final remarks, questions, things to share? Yes? What would you like to see us do here? I mean, act on the feedback frame. <laughs> this is kind of the, the first um, actions uh, towards a possible uh, collaboration uh, across all the sectors, across all the levels of the government. Uh, truth to be told, we're also just starting uh, this process in Taiwan as well. You hear a lot about municipal POs, about devolution, about township and regional vitalization. But truth to be told, it's just one or two municipalities out of six. It's just you know five townships and, and, and so on out of 34 or so. So we, we still also have a lot of ways to go to to make this cultural change in all levels of Taiwan's government system as well. And I'm sure that you here also uh, are facing this kind of uh, uneven distribution of civic tech and dot tech people in cultures. So just making things as accessible and inclusive as possible. As we say, we're not just scaling out to all the countries 
or scaling up of uh, the tools that handles thousands of people, 100,000 people, we're also scaling deeply, meaning that touching uh, populations and people who previously were not aware that this kind of conversational um, consensus facilitation methodologies can really change people's lives. So I would encourage you to spread the same culture. Um, any thoughts, feelings, ideas? Um, but if not, um, let's give a final round of applause to all the people from previous from the And one more thing, uh, I believe uh, it was Yunchen, I think there was a couple of people here also that were more very focused on helping crowdsource notes. I know that we were, you know, like very involved in the oh, yeah, process, yeah. but yes, our chess writers. Yeah, yes. uh, that's okay. phenomenal. Thank yes. you so much, because like that's what allowed us to carry you into the world. Thank you for those of you who are like more involved in the process and notes process as well. I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi was like a bit of a barrier to that, but. Uh, and also, uh, just like the links up there for like crowdsourcing tools, uh, hoping that people can you know, like, use that if they have no specific tools that can be helpful, put it on there, and that we can launch it. And that's it. Thank you very attentive, and see you maybe next year. <laughs> Thank you. If you found the feedback frames helpful, please shoot this in the comments below.